Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today we'll take a look at the integral from 0 to 1 of the arc tangent of x over x plus 1 dx. And we will be using Feynman integration. Alright, so what we're going to do first is we are going to break out integration by parts. We're going to, uh, you know, just break out the integration by parts formula. And we will let our u be equal to this arctangent x part, uh, which implies that our du is 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, and our dv is the rest, that's 1 over x plus 1 dx, meaning our v is natural log x plus 1. All right, plugging that into our formula, we're going to get uh, u times v evaluated at the bounds minus the integral um, over our bounds of natural log x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. All right, now these bounds don't require any sort of uh, tricks to evaluate. You literally just plug in the numbers. If you plug in 1, you're going to get arctangent 1, which is pi over 4, times the natural log of 1 plus 1. That's natural log 2. So you just have pi natural log 2 over 4, and then minus the integral that we, uh, that we got. All right. So I just basically stated that right there. Um, we're going to get, oh, and I the lower limit there is 0. If you plug in 0 for either x, our tangent 0 is 0, natural log 1 is 0. That's going to go away. So we're left with this, which means we are left with this. Okay. Next, um, I'm going to let some new integral j be equal to um, to this integral right here. All right, so now we're just solving a whole new integral. Once we solve j, we take pi natural log 2 over 4 and subtract j from it, and we have our original integral. And that's stated right here. Okay, so now comes time for Feynman integration, and our reparameterization is going to be um, done by just placing a t in front of that uh, x there in the natural log function. Um, and you'll see that if we evaluate it at the point 0, we're going to get 0. should be clear enough. And if we evaluate it at the point 1, we're going to get our integral j. All right, so now we use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign um, to take f prime of t by taking this integral and taking the integrand and differentiate, uh, taking the partial derivative with respect to t. Um, and if you take the partial derivative with respect to t of this, this is what you'll get. So our f prime of t is equal to that integral right there. So now we need to evaluate that integral um, and then take its antiderivative with respect to t. All right, <clears throat> now I'm not going to show the, the steps for doing this integral. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it, it's a little bit, it's difficult, but it's all stuff you could do uh, from, for, with things you learn in Calculus 1 and Calculus 2. So I'm not going to go over it. After you evaluate it and split it up and all that stuff, this is what you end up with. So we'll have f prime of t is equal to all this junk right here. All right, again... This integral, although, you know, a little bit messy, definitely doable with, with standard techniques that I don't really like to get into very much on this channel. Um, I'll briefly go over the process of how you would do that. Um, I would, you would use partial fraction decomposition. That's it. You just use partial fraction decomposition on that. And you arrive at that. Okay. So... Now we have, we'll use the uh, fundamental theorem of calculus part two, which states that the integral from zero to one of, usually they have this as um, f, the function f, and then we have big F over here, but it works this way too. Uh, we're just going to say that the integral from zero to one of f prime of t is equal to uh, f at one, which is the uh, antiderivative of f prime of t evaluated at one, minus f of 0. And we know that f of 1 is j. We already stated that. We know that f of 1 is j and f of 0 is 0. So we end up with j. So the integral from 0 to 1 of our f prime of t 
is equal to j. And this is our f prime of t. So now we will integrate each one of these things from 0 to 1 with respect to t. And that will give us our integral j. Okay, so basically I just put an integral from 0 to 1 sign in front of all these expressions up here and set it equal to j. And now you'll notice this right here, this integral from 0 to 1 of natural log t plus 1 over t squared plus 1 dt, that is j. Don't forget, j is that thing we just said, except our dummy, dummy variable here is x, and our dummy variable down here is t. So this is just negative j. So what we do is we um, add j to both sides to get 2j over here, divide both sides by 2, and evaluate these integrals, which, again, I'm not going to go over the process of solving these integrals. Um, you know, that that's fairly trivial. So uh, this is what we end up with. Uh, negative j is equal to, you know, this integral plus this integral is equal to j. Okay. And this is what you end up with j is equal to pi over 8 times this integral times natural log 2 over 4 times this integral. Um, and if you evaluate these integrals, you can evaluate this integral and you can evaluate this integral very easily um, and then simplify and you'll get pi natural log 2 over 8. Again, not going to go over how to do that. Um, that's fairly straightforward. Okay, so don't forget, i was equal to pi natural log 2 over 4 minus j. So um, our i is actually equal to pi natural log 2 over 4 minus pi natural log 2 over 8. So our original integral, our target integral i from the very beginning of the video, evaluates to pi natural log 2 over 8. And I'll just state that right here. So there you go, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.